Welcome back, guys. So we are again on the same page where we are talking about risk averse uh, preferences. So what we're going to define a new concept, which is also very important. So given that we have a preference relation on the set of lotteries, for any lottery P, we define a concept uh, called certainty equivalence and denoted by CE of P. And how do we define it? Well, a certainty equivalence of a price, uh, of a lottery, I'm sorry, is a price which satisfies this, all right, this indifference. What is it? Well, it says, look, I offer you two lotteries. On the one side, the lottery P itself. On the other side, it is the a price, a sure lottery, where I offer you the certainty equivalence of that price. All right. So whatever that price level is, satisfying this indifference, we call it certainty equivalence. Okay. So let's think it this way. Um, let's say I'm, I'm I'm trying to give an example. Let's say the P is a, a lottery where we offer one half hundred dollars and then uh, one half two hundred dollars. Okay. And so. Uh, I don't know the, which utility function represents this preference relation, and but nevertheless, let's suppose I know that uh, if I give this guy another lottery Q, where, for example, uh, with one probability, I offer this guy uh, $150, and this guy tells me that P is indifferent to Q, okay? Well, then that means the certainty equivalence of P is nothing but Q itself, uh, CEP, is the Q itself, okay? Um, so th th that's, that's the uh, price uh, amount, I mean. Uh, that's, uh, that's not correct notation-wise because certainty equivalence is the, pro well, yeah, this is, this is a notation-wise uh, wrong because certainty equivalence is a real number. It's not, it's not something like this because a lottery has two components, price, I mean, it could be a vector, so more than two components, but at least two components, price and the probability of that price. So therefore, a, a certainty equivalence of a lottery is just a real number. And in this case, it's not exactly Q, it's the price that is included in Q. So it's $150, okay? So this is the definition of certainty equivalence. All right, so here, how do I find the certainty equivalence? Well, remember, it's basically the indifference between the lottery P and the C of, uh, CE of P lottery. Well, if the utility function U is representing this preference relation, that means, this indifference means, the uh, expected utility of P is equal to uh, expected utility of this lottery CEP. But what is the expected utility of this uh, uh, lottery? Well, it's probability one times the price itself, the utility of uh, CEP. So it's equal to the expected utility of P. So here, when I come to this, what is the expected utility of P? It's this level. So if I go all the back here, what is the price level? That is, so what is the price level where the utility of that price is going to be exactly equal to the expected utility of P? Well, so that price level is the certainty equivalence of lottery P. Okay, this is how we... Uh, pin down the certainty equivalence of lottery P, at least for this example. So, that's it. Here, what I'm going to define next is the, what's called, risk premium of a lottery P. All right? All right, the risk premium, the risk premium of lottery P is denoted by a difference between expected value of lottery and the certainty equivalence of lottery. So here, for this lottery P, remember, I have alpha probability 
x1 and 1 minus alpha probability x2. But don't forget, I can write and calculate expected value and, and, and certainty equivalence of, uh, uh, of lottery for any lottery. It doesn't have to be as simple as this. So here, the difference between E of P and CEP, this difference, is what's called the risk premium. All right? It's just a definition. Therefore, any preference relation, preference relation uh, that can be represented by a utility function uh, is risk averse, von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, risk averse if and only if the risk premium of this lottery is greater than or is equal to zero for all lottery P. All right, uh, this is not a knee, but a preference relation on set of lotteries is risk averse if the certainty, I'm sorry, the risk premium of a lottery is non-negative for every lottery in the set of uh, lotteries, okay? So this is another, so th this is, uh, I mean, this is a sort of a, con not conclusion, but a sort of a theorem that we can derive from the definition of risk aversion and the definition of risk premium. But I'm gonna give this as a definition, so I'm not gonna prove it, but in fact, the proof is pretty straightforward. A preference relation, another way of defining uh, risk aversion, is, 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 is such that uh, if you calculate the risk premium for every lottery, well, this risk premium must be non-negative for every lottery in the set. Well, but don't forget there are infinitely many lotteries, and so you have to check this for every uh, lottery. Um, but once again, it's very simple. So if I have, for example, um, one, oops, sorry, P equals, uh, what is it? P equals uh, one health probability, $100, and then one health probability, $200, okay? So here, what I can calculate is, well, first off, what is the expected value of P? Well, the expected value of P is simple. It's basically uh, 100 times one health plus 200 times one health. So it's nothing but 150, right? This is the expected uh, value of the lottery P. Well, what about the uh, certainty equivalence of lottery P? Well, if you remember again, the definition of certainty equivalence, it's basically the price Z where the sure lottery or the U of Z is exactly equal to um, um, expected utility of P. So here, I need to calculate the expected utility of P. Well, however, in order to say that a preference relation is uh, risk averse or not, here I need to know the utility function, right? So let's suppose the utility function is, for example, x uh, square, all right? Okay, so what is the expected utility of this lottery? Uh, well, x square is too large, I know. Uh, let's calculate it anyway. So here, the expected utility of lottery P is this. One half probability utility of 100, so which is 100 times 100, so it's basically 10,000, plus one half probability uh, utility of 200, which is 200 times 200, so it's 40,000. Okay, so if you do this uh, arithmetic, it's basically... Uh, Right, uh, 50,000 divided by uh, uh, 2, it's equal to 25,000. Okay, so what about the utility of Z? So utility of Z is basically Z square, right? Hmm, so what is the Z, the prize, that's going to give you $25,000? Uh, well, if you take the square root of both sides, that basically gives you that Z has to be equal to uh, 500. Agree? Okay, because 500 times 500 is equal to 25,000. 
Huh. So what I found is therefore the certainty equivalence of this lottery P is equal to 500. Okay. Very good. So what do I have? I have uh, the risk premium. The risk. Well, let's let's use this side of the board. So the risk premium is always defined as. A risk premium of this lottery P is always defined as expected value of P minus certainty equivalence uh, of P. So here, the certainty equivalence of P is 500. Expected value is 150 minus 500. Well, whatever this is, well, it's minus 350. Uh, but this is definitely not non-negative. It's negative. Hmm. So therefore... By using this definition, you call it, or theorem, whatever you call it, uh, this preference relation or a preference relation that is represented by this utility function is not risk averse. Why? Well, because the risk premium for at least one lottery is, uh, is, is negative. It's not, uh, it's not satisfying this. And hence, I just found one example that contradicts with definition and that's enough to conclude that a preference relation that is represented by this utility function is not risk averse okay well if i want to prove let's say u is equal to square root of x well if you calculate ep cep let's do it um is it easy not really, because 100 and square, uh, square root of 100 and square root of 200, they're not integer numbers, so I'm going to have a problem calculating them. Um, so I have to change uh, or give a different numbers. Uh, but the thing is, if you do this exercise with this utility function, what you're going to see that R of P is going to be positive. But is it enough to conclude that this a utility function uh, I'm sorry, uh, the pre preference relation that is represented by this utility function is risk averse. No, that's not enough. Because remember, you have to prove this, you know, R of P is non-negative for every P. So this is just one P we selected. So therefore, proving that something is risk averse is difficult. Proving that something is not risk averse, however, is very easy. And that's simply because of this part for all p in order to prove that preference relation is risk averse you have to prove this for all lotteries but if you want to show that something is not risk averse it's enough to pick just one p which violates this all right um that's it